All right, we're on. Let's see. Let's see how we're going to connect everyone. Daniel, it's good to see you, man. Oh, it's How's good life in you. Sacramento? Life in Sacramento is going good. We got um, it was re really warm recently, but it's got a little bit colder. Probably not as cold as East Coast. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, it's interesting. Today, it was probably a little close to seventy. Can you imagine? Really? Close wow. to seventy. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit warmer than here, I guess. Um, especially in the morning, it gets really, really cold. But it was warm last week. So that's good. It's good. All right. Well, um, we'll wait a little bit more. Um, people joining people in. Again and we'll start. Um, yeah, we'll start in about a few minutes. We'll just wait for more people to log in. Sounds good. We're still waiting for Michael to come on. All right. Hey. There's Michael. Michael, welcome. <laughs> Майкл, вам нужно еще на микрофончик там нажать, чтобы вас слышно было. Вас не слышно еще. Правильно, все правильно. О, на, на сидеть, и мир тебе. С миром, приветствуем, Майкл. Приветствуем вас, Майкл. Как мужи божьи, ну, здравствуйте. Все супер, мы вот с Даньком как раз говорили, погода у нас очень хорошая, у нас сегодня очень тепло было. У нас вообще, у нас Флорида маленькая была. Да, ну у нас немножко холодновато, но uh, было тепло last week, а эта неделя немножко, немножко холодновато. Ну у нас вообще благословение, мы же в горе, ближе к Богу. А, нас... ну да. Wonderful, хорошо, guys. Um, we, we're gonna start this thing. So, um... Just wanted to introduce everyone who's on the panel today. Um, first off, I want to introduce Michael Ostapovich. He's been, boy, boy, I can say he's been my mentor for as long as I can remember, probably as long as I've been in youth ministry. Actually, I'm going to switch to Russian so Michael understands. Um, so uh, Michael был моим, можно сказать так, mentorом или духовным отцом какой-то роли, наверное, уже много-много лет. Майк, наверное, лет 15 уже вместе работаем. Наверное, да, да, не меньше. Я помню, um, я даже не знаю, у нас есть ребята, которые смотрят from West Coast. Um, I don't know, если вы видели Майкла, I'm sure, что вы где-то видели его на конференциях и um, на служениях молодежных. Майкл был в служении молодежи, наверное, сколько? Больше 25 лет? Да, да, больше. Это 28 лет. Um, ну, у меня очень много воспоминаний, как Майкл нас, даже не знаю, как правильно сказать, воспитывал. Помню, как-то у нас пригласил нашу группу, Майкл, чтобы мы пели, и у нас названия не было. И, короче, мы выбирали, 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 выбирали. Майкл говорит, давайте назовем группой «Выбор», раз вы выбираете, так не можете. И вот оно так и стало. Группа «Выбор» так и осталась. Помню, помню, это прекрасный момент был. Um, so, Mike, I хотел бы, чтобы вы просто поделились, что происходит у нас здесь на на нашем побережье с молодежью, какие планы, как как все дальше будет происходить, пожалуйста. Ну, первое вас приветствую и рад видеть и действительно есть много воспоминаний. Это не год, не не два, а больше 25 лет, и я тоже помню все моменты, как э, активность и группы, выбор, потому что выбор, и, <coughs> вообще хор и другие, все это уникально. 
Вообще проходили служения благословенные, и, но время то идет, знаете, вот. И незабываемый момент, тысячи молодых людей каялись, и Бог Духом крестил, и помню, Негарский водопад, и другие моменты вообще. Ну, Алекс один из был с самых активных, сколько я помню, так что мне приятно было работать это время. И вообще, как мы стартнули, вот это у нас было регионы, пять регионов уже разделили на север и юг. И в последнее время уже Игорь Симонович и Калыци мы работали. Вот. И я хочу сказать, что Бог благословил сильно. И я повторяться не буду. Все было, можно сказать, благословенно. И есть что вспомнить. И не нам просто, а Богу пусть слава будет. Вот. Не нам, не нам, но имени Божьему пусть будет слава. Так что мы рабы ничто не стоящие. Что могли сделать, сделали. И до последнего убиения сердца будем что-то делать во имя Иисуса. Вот, так что, и, ну что, я хочу просто э, сказать о том, что время пришло, и как в прошлом году мне рассудилось, вот, э, э, это служение или должность среди молодежи на восточном побережье Америки э, передать Алексу моему другу и хорошему, прекрасному брату, чтобы он продолжал это служение. Вот. И если кто-то из молодежи, из лидеров сослышит нас, да, вот. или будут слышать, то если Алекс будет обижать мне звонки, я буду сразу же разбираться, что было все хорошо. Так что... Надеемся, что, э, ну, поскольку я знаю Алекса, Алекс вообще исключительно, и, и нету никакого, э, можно сказать, и такого неправильного учения, все правильно, так что, надеюсь, в надежных руках, и конференция подтвердила мое желание было это, <coughs> мы не раз говорили, несколько лет подготавливались к этому моменту, и спасибо Алексу, что дал согласие, и на сегодняшний день официально, Алекс Анкудович, молодежный пастор на восточном побережье Америки. Конференция затвердила. Так что в любую минуту, если нужно, я готов. <coughs> я немножко голос потерял. Где-то чем могу помочь и, и в этом направлении. Так что я хочу просто пожелать или несколько мест прочитать как такого наставления и помолиться. Хорошо? Одно из таких мест Старозакония 10, 12, 13 такие слова. Итак, Израиль, что требует от тебя Господь Бог твой? Того только, чтобы ты боялся Господа, Бога твоего, ходил всеми путями Его, любил Его и служил Господу Богу твоему от всего сердца и от всей души твоей, чтобы соблюдал заповеди Господни и постановление Его которые сегодня заповедую тебе, дабы тебе было хорошо. Вот такое одно из мест, и которое оно трогательно, правильно ходить всеми путями, которые Бог заповедовал, чтобы было хорошо и в служении, и в жизни кругом. И второе место, 2 Тимофея 2, 15, такие слова. Старайся представить себя Богу достойным делателем, неукоризненным, верно преподающим Слово Истины. Вот такие места священного Писания, они просто сильные для нас, лидеров. Мы, конечно, живем во время технологии, прогресса, это все на своих местах. Но мое такое ну, желание, что продолжалось служение, что больше молодежь имела и живого общения в разных направлениях, семинарах, конференциях, кем-то, в инженерских поездках. Это просто мое такое ну, желание, чтобы оно, молодежь, живо было для Господа во имя Иисуса. И такие слова 1 Коринфянам 15.58. Это конкретное пожелание и тебе, Алекс, и Даниилу, Даниилу, чтобы вы взяли вот это место просто в вооружение и помнили, что не просто мы так несем служение. На земле, может, нас не все поймут, 
но мы знаем, что мы работаем во имя Господа и для Его славы. Я думаю, вы согласны, правда? И такое место. Итак, братья мои, э, Даниил, э, Алекс и вообще все лидеры молодежные, братья мои, возлюб... будьте тверды, непоколебимы, всегда преуспевайте в деле Господнем, зная, что труд ваш не всетен пред Господом. Поэтому это э, есть моменты, что мы успеваем. А мое пожелание, чтобы преуспевали, чтобы прогресс был, чтобы результаты были, чтобы Божье благословение почивало э, в, в, этом, в этом направлении. И поэтому, дорогие лидеры, э, нуждайтесь Божьего помазания, наполнения Духом Святым, будьте образцами для молодежи. И поверьте, молодежь будет благословением вашим. Тоже. Я верю, что молодежь будет поддерживать и ваше служение. Тем более, я так понял, что оно вообще идет как будто бы в одной команде. И вообще мы в одной команде работали, работаем на Царство Божие. Вы согласны, правда? Вот. И я думаю, что много времени забирать не надо. Я от души желаю благословения вам, чтобы Бог, особенно тебя, Алекс, и Даниил тебя благословлял во всех сферах жизни. И духовные помазания, и, и материально, и мудрости, и чтобы Бог дал, дал, чтобы никакого лжеучения не было, чтобы просто Божий провод или видение Божье было в этом служении, потому что в последнее время не так легко работать, потому что дьявол мало времени осталось, и он все силы на молодое поколение, и поэтому нелегкая работа среди молодежи, но с Иисусом я верю, что будет все прекрасно. Э, давайте мы помолимся, хорошо? Или что есть вопросы какие? Не, не, можем помолиться. Да. да? Вот, так что это мое личное пожелание, и я знаю, что мы будем Спасибо. встречаться и, и, и служить. И, э, так что пусть Бог благословит. Я хочу от души благословить молитвенно вас, чтобы Бог утешал в своих мощных руках, чтобы никакие силы ада не преодолели. Давайте молимся. Боже праведный, э, моя молитва к Тебе сейчас за молодежь на этом континенте, в Соединенных Штатах Америки и до края земли, благослови нашу славянскую молодежь во имя Иисуса Христа. Благослови молодежных руководителей. Пусть твое благословение и помазание будет во имя Иисуса Христа. Особенно моя молитва, благослови Алекса Антудовича, благослови Даниила, благослови, Господи, в этой нелегкой работе служения молодежи здесь, в Соединенных Штатах Америки. Пусть они будут благословенны Тобой, дорогой Спаситель. Пусть милость Твоя и благодать на их присутствует во имя Иисуса. Благослови со всех источников, верхних и нижних. А счастливый, хорошим здоровьем, духовными силами во имя Иисуса Христа. Мой Бог, мы отдаемся в Твои распоражающие руки, благословляющие руки, и верим, что Ты будешь продолжать делать свое дело среди молодежи здесь, на этом континенте. Тебе, нашему Богу, слава, честь, поклонение. Аминь. Thank you, Michael. Спасибо огромнейшее. Я Будьте думаю, что для, для многих людей, особенно да, для меня, в первую очередь, вы оставили огромнейший пример, так как нужно служить, э, как это по-русски слово, наверное, безвозмездно, да? Безвозмездно. То есть иногда не считая со своими силами, с финансами, вы оставили для меня огромнейший пример. Я думаю, что даже для многих, для многих молодежи вы оставили пример огромнейший, как реально нужно служить Богу. Не смотреть там когда-то на свою работу, не смотреть, иногда нужно и пожертвовать больше. Ну, 
Вы показали огромнейший пример для меня лично. Спасибо огромное. Спасибо. Пусть благословит двойным, двойным помазанием вас, братья мои. Thank you, Хорошо, all right, guys, um, we're going to switch to Daniel here. So um, I'm going to share my vision a little bit in the, in the moment, but I wanted to kind of give some time to Daniel. To He's going to explain how we're going to tie in East Coast with West Coast and what we're going to do together. And So go ahead, Daniel, take it over. Uh, thank you, Alex. Alex, can you see me and hear me well? Yeah, of course. Awesome, because for some reason, um, something's wrong with my computer. I cannot see you, but as long as you can see me, <laughs> we'll fix that problem later. Uh, hey, uh, you, yeah, greetings to you. I'm, um, I'm all excited to join um, this first webinar um, this year. I just want to share something uh, that was on my heart. Um, as I was uh, blessed to be a youth leader for the district, um, I had a chance and opportunity to travel to different states, meet a lot of you and um and so it's been a blessing i have spent a lot of time praying and thinking of a vision for the youth ministry and we had some time actually together with some of the youth leaders here in california about discussing youth ministry and seeing how we can minister to uh youth leaders to youth uh, slavic youth in america and um when brother alexan kudovich was blessed for the ministry of uh, appointed to be a youth leader for East Coast, I was, I rejoice in my heart. And so since that time, we've been communicating a lot, talking, uh, how can we work together um, and how can we combine this ministry together to minister to youth leaders across US. And so um, there's been a lot of praying, a lot of thinking and how to do that. And so a couple of things that we're looking forward to do this year together is um, we want to do webinar like this uh, together each month, both East Coast, West Coast, uh, South, North, Central America, uh, both of the fellowships, the district and the fellowship of East Coast doing those webinars together, which I believe it's a uh, it's going to be a blessing. We're going to Alex will explain a little bit more. It's going to we're going to be talking about practical things that will help us in our youth ministries. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then second thing that we want to work together also is with youth uh, leaders retreat. I know there's uh, one coming up uh, in Pennsylvania uh, on March 1st. I'm actually planning to join for uh, one day. Uh, so I'm looking forward to meet some of you guys um, there. And we're going to have also another one here in West Coast in Truckee, California, which is one hour away from Sacramento. We rented a beautiful, nice home uh, in the mountains, as I said, one hour from Sacramento, and it will be in October, October 12th through, through 15th. So um, we're gonna have uh, youth leaders here from West Coast and some from East Coast joining together. We're gonna have that retreat. So this is the second area that we are planning to work together, uh, particularly on retreats, you know, just building the leaders up and kind of connecting. My, my main thing specifically for this year is really to make sure we as the youth leaders, we connect together. And so as we stand in unity, we can also minister to our churches, to our youth within our churches. Um, so this is just shortly about what um, me and Alex have been kind of talking and what we are looking forward to do together. Um, so, and then another thing I also want to mention that um, in um, in April, April 19th through 21st, there will be a district council in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so I would also invite all of you guys to join if you are around in the area or uh, if you're farther away, fly in. It's going to be a blessed time. We're actually going to have a, uh, a national superintendent of Assemblies of God, uh, newly elected. Um, he's going to be preaching there actually on Friday night. And then we're going to have other speakers like George W. Duke and, um, and other people. I believe it's going to be a blessed time. And then on the 21st, which is Saturday, we're going to have a youth conference at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. So if you're around the area, please join us. Um, I believe it's going to be a blessed time. And I'm looking forward to how we, um, me and Alex and just all of you, how we can work together, encourage each other, connect with each other, pray for each other. I think this time this time is uh, we really we really need each other. You know, with uh, hearing all the news that is happening around with the young people, particularly just recently talking about um, shooting in Florida um, that involves young people, youth, you know, and things 
a lot of crazy things happening around us with the young people. And I think this is the perfect time to unite together, to unite forces and to just minister to the young people that God has blessed. I'll ask my guys. In our church. Yes. Hey, Daniel, we lost you there for a second at the end. Yeah. So, yeah, I was um, I was just saying that it's a really good time to unite together in the midst of all the chaos that happens around us in schools and everything like that. I think it's a really good time that we can come together. And um, I believe this is a good start for us to do this webinar. And I'm looking forward to see what God is going to do through this year. I also want to say that I did send out an email to most of you. If you don't receive my emails, uh, please let me know. And and we can uh, I'll put you on the email list, just kind of updates on what's going on with uh, with the district and with the youth in the district and everything like that. So God bless you. And I'm excited to be part of this webinar. Yeah, cool deal. Thank you, Daniel. Wonderful. So uh, first off, I want to start. I know our time is running out and I want to kind of keep this on a short note. Um, as many of you know, today is a pretty sad day. Uh, Billy Graham um, has passed away at the age of 99 interesting quote that many people have shared i want to kind of share with you guys someday you will read or hear that billy graham is dead don't you believe a word of it i shall be more alive than i am now i will just have changed my address i will have gone into the presence of god and it was said by billy graham he he said this so what a powerful man of god what a powerful testimony and what a powerful just minister that said yes to god um so guys i want to switch gears here a little bit um and share with you some of my vision or the, some of the things that i'm um trying to trying to do um here in the youth ministry and i want to switch my screens here so just a few things that I want to share with you guys as far as the youth ministry. I, I, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I try to be as simple as possible. So there's only three things that I really want to achieve in this youth ministry, right, in the position that's been given to me. And I've shared this with Daniel as well. I only want to do three things really well. Um, I want to do monthly webinars such as this one. Um, we'll be bringing on a lot of very relative material to all of the youth leaders um, something that you can take and maybe even possibly watch with your team and apply to your ministry um, number two develop practical leadership materials something that um, when I, I was a youth leader for a little over 15 years and I wish some of the material that I have now was available to me um, so we're in the process of developing and developing different um, resources that are gonna be available on the website that you can take and run with it. And I wanna be there to help you. And number three, um, we'll be doing retreats, such as one next, next weekend, where Lee Grady is gonna come in and he's gonna be talking about discipleship. And uh, we're also gonna be talking about setting goals and creating clarity. Um, if you notice, there's no conferences on this list. Um, not that I'm against conferences or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if you've seen this. This is the list of conferences that's going to be happening around our area. Obviously, there's plenty more on the West Coast, um, but this is something that's going on in our area that you can kind of see. And uh, um, you as a youth leader, you can take your youth and uh, go out and visit and uh, fellowship with different youth so conferences are important and, and i think conferences should be done in a local church by the local church local leaders should be responsible for doing the conference um, their team should be responsible for making sure everything works um, that's that's just how i see it so um, there's plenty of conferences amazing conferences in many different churches that you guys can just you know plan and go out and visit so that's 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 my plan this is what I want to do so I hope um, I'm, I'm going to be really practical and me and Daniel at these monthly webinars we're going to bring you good speakers we'll 
do discussions. Sometimes we'll even have um, more like panels where, where we're going to bring in a bunch of different leaders and we'll talk about very relevant subjects and hopefully we'll, we'll learn all together. So um, I hope you guys will enjoy this. I hope that this, this um, new year will bring in a lot of great things and I hope I could be of help to you. By the way, one more thing before I have a little um, topic prepared for today. Before I go into it, uh, you might want to write this down, the website, my website, where I'm going to put a lot of this information. And actually, this webinar is going to be recorded and it's going to be housed on that website. The website is called igrowleaders.com. Um, igrowleaders.com. So you can see a lot of information on there. All of this material is going to be on there as well. So um, I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. I hope I could be a blessing to you. Um, and that's pretty much it. So um, without further ado, let me bring up a little poll. And if you guys can quickly kind of answer, I'll give you about 30 seconds for Paul. Walter, go ahead if you can put it up. Um, I want you guys to answer. And um, let me see. I think I have to go out of full screen here. Hang on a second. Uh, Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I think you can, yes. So here's a poll, quick poll. Do you currently set goals in your youth ministry? Um, and I want you guys to select one answer, yes, no, or if you just function under church's vision. So if you can go ahead and I'll give you another 15 seconds so you can quickly answer. Cool deal. Um, 10 more seconds and let's see what, what people responded. And it's, this is really interesting. And by the way, we're talking today about a topic of measure up. So it's going to be interesting. All right. Two more seconds. Let's take a look at the responses here. Very interesting. So do you currently set goals in your youth ministry? A lot of people said yes. Some people said no. And some people said um that they function on, on their church's vision. Very interesting. Wonderful. Walter, how about you put up a next poll? There's going to be one more. Do you measure progress of your youth ministry at the end of the year? Or if you somehow have a, a some sort of system in place where you just maybe get together and measure if you achieved the goals of the youth ministry, I'll give you some 15, 20 seconds. So if you guys can answer. Do you measure the progress of your youth ministry at the end of the year? Very interesting. All right, let's take a look how you guys answered. So 58% said yes and 42% said no. Very, very interesting. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to a few things here that I want to kind of go over. Again, I've been in the youth ministry for a little over 15 years. So, you know, I've, I've been where you are, if you will. But um, at the same time, almost every day for work, what I do, as I go out to measure spaces where contractors or homeowners um, want to install kitchens, I, I'm a kitchen designer by trade. Um, I have been doing this for a little over, I think a little over 15 years now. And it took me a while to get a hang of it. You know, I, I had created a checklist in my mind every time I would complete, you know, measuring process. I would go over that checklist in my head to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And all of my questions, you know, are answered. So, you know, I've made plenty of mistakes while measuring and designing kitchens in the past. Um, there were times when customers would distract me and, you know, I would shift my concentration and then bam, you know, there's a mistake. I wouldn't even see it. I would make a mistake in the measurement. Um, and, you know, it takes time and it takes money and then the customer is unhappy and, you know, there's delays on the job. I remember there was one time when I was off 
by about half of an inch. Half of an inch is about this much, right? And uh, it made a difference. And uh, I had to reorder some cabinets and, um, you know, it takes a lot of precision in, in what I do. And, you know, I was thinking one day, how do you measure progress in the youth ministry? Is there something that you can take a tape measure to, or do you just try to stay busy and hope that in return, you will achieve some kind of result, right? So thinking back to the time when I was a youth leader, I was so busy working in the youth ministry to the point where I had no time to stop and spend time on setting some, setting some long-term goals. You know, I actually came up with excuses such as, I am not the type of a guy that will sit down and, you know, make goals of some sort. I mean, I kind of knew where I was going in a way. Another excuse I had is I don't really know how to dream. You know, I, was, I wasn't a dreamer, I was saying to myself. Or I don't know how to set goals. Or one more was that this is not my strength. And those were just excuses that I re, you know, and in reality, I was just tired, overworked, and just short-sighted sometimes. And, you know, today when I look back at all of those years that I was in ministry, I wish that I had prayed more, um, planned more, demonstrated an example to younger leaders that were coming after me how to do the same. And you know, it's been almost 10 years since God started working in me, teaching me many things that I really needed to learn. Uh, one of them was goal settings or setting goals. Um, I have always heard from other people that setting goals is very important. And in order for you to achieve something, you must set goals. You must be intentional in your work. Um, but yet again, I was just so busy. There were so many things that needed my attention, um, such as small groups, very important, right? Um, music ministry, I'm a musician, I love music. I've played in a band for a long time. Um, event planning, different conferences, leaders meetings that we had to do, helping out in church, um, choir, and just, you know, so many other things. Now, if you're still listening, <laughs> then I think we have something in common. Um, you probably want to improve. Uh, you want to learn and make a difference. That's probably why you're here now. You want to learn and make a difference and see how you can improve, um, how you can improve your ministry. Oh, guys, by the way, if you have any questions during any of this time, there's a chat in your um, on in the sidebar. So make sure. You can submit some questions, and at the end, we'll take maybe five minutes for questions. So, so I would like to share with you a few points to kind of help you get on get on the road of planning and measuring your progress. And by the way, you know it's interesting. God Himself was planning to save the humanity um, after Adam and Eve fell and sinned in the Garden of Eden. He planned to say, send his son, Jesus Christ, to save the world. Very interesting. So there's point number one I want to present to you. Point number one, stop and take a day off. It took me a long time until I kind of figured out that I needed to have some time off just to think. I was running 100 miles an hour. I was always busy. I had no time. And now I realize that when I take the time off, turn off my cell phone and start praying and thinking about the future, something amazing happens. Ideas start to put in, just pour in. Clarity starts to come to some of the most complicated situations. It's just amazing. And it's important to write down those ideas. Um, that will come to you. Write them down, all of them. Let your brain think about all of these ideas for the few weeks when you write them down. Let your brain just think about them. Later, when you look back at your ideas, you will just remove the ones that are 
maybe not important, right? So that's not point number one. You really need to stop and take a day off and just think, see what God is putting into your heart. Number two, uh, let's see here. Go and take a weekend off with your team. Uh, this is very important. If you work with a team of people in your ministry, in, in, in youth, you need to take a weekend off and do a staff retreat with your team. You, know, you really don't want to come up with all of your ideas by, by yourself. Bringing it to the team and say, hey, uh, hey guys, I, you know, I have a revelation from God. <laughs> this is what we'll be doing next year. You know, follow me. And they, they, you know, they will follow you. However, if you want your team to be sold on the vision and the goals 100%, then you need to involve them in the progress. Give them the opportunity to be invested in the youth ministry. They will feel like they're a part of the team and that they're moving somewhere. There are so many great books and seminars and videos on how to set goals. The, the problem is that we don't take time to do it. You know, a lot of times, I, I would, I'm at fault of this. I would read the book, the, but there's so many great ideas and it's like almost too hard. And it's like when you don't take time and do it, nothing happens. Um, and even if we do get to, get to it, we set goals, but a lot of times there's no clarity and you really don't know how to achieve those goals. So who's responsible for that? And how do you measure the progress? And how do we know if we will achieve those goals that we set before, you know, the set deadline? Um, so, by the way, if you're coming to the leaders retreat next weekend here in Pennsylvania, this is something that we'll be talking about and we'll split in groups and we'll be able to work on your goals and things like that. It's going to be very awesome. Um, so point number two, you need to go and take a weekend off with your team and pray and see what ideas God is giving you. Point number three, you need to simplify and create clarity. Um, what's more pressing on a leader's mind is a goal that you have no idea how to achieve. You know, from my own experience, I can tell you that I've been you know I've, I've set goals and previously and i had no idea how to achieve them it was pretty embarrassing i remember i was pretty young uh, some bunch of years ago i stood in front of the church and i said church this is the goal that we sent set for this year and this is this is what we're going to achieve but i had no idea how to achieve that goal i we did not achieve it um i so Let's see, I think my screen just paused. Sorry about that. So um, we did not achieve that goal and it was pretty embarrassing. I just, I have no idea how to create clarity and how to delegate. So you must learn how to break down a goal into smaller achievable steps and assign responsibilities to people. You really need to learn how to do that. Um, this is why you need your team around you. You can't do it by yourself. Uh, you must understand that it's just impossible for you to do it alone. You can use um, the tools that we'll have available and resources. So next weekend at the leaders retreat, we'll have those tools available. And then so you can check back igrowleaders.com in a week and we'll have those tools available for you. You can download it. We'll have some videos explaining how to use those tools. So it's, it's going to help you to create clarity more you know in setting goals and who's going to be responsible and how how you're going to achieve things and remember your team wants to know exactly what they need to do remember that help them to become better help them to reach people for god help them and use their so they can use their gifts for god's glory so that's point number three point number four you need to measure and keep score. And if you guys remember, 58% um, of you said that you measure progress at the end of the year, and 42% of you said that you don't measure the progress at the end of the year.
I think out of all of these, um, out of all of these points, this is probably the most important one. Um, and you know, when I was in school, I had a report card that showed me, and especially it showed my parents about my educational progress. And however, what I noticed is that in our Slavic churches, we don't really have much accountability. Think about that. I believe we had had many times from or heard from many times from our, from our pastors um, something like, "We need to save people, we need to save the youth." Um, but at the end of the day, I always ask the question, "Well, how do I do it? What do I <laughs> what do I have to do?" Um, what do you really like specifically want me to do right or how much time will it take how much finances will it take or how many people even should be involved in whatever needs to be achieved and at the end of the day the conversation ends usually without any actionable plan so today i have a scorecard so i i, I didn't mention i own a business and um I have a, you know, God's been blessing me a lot. And today in my business, I implement all of these things, by the way. The, the four points that I'm talking to you about here, I implement them in my business now. And today I have a scorecard in my business. I keep score. And I keep score every week. Yes, you heard me right. Every week. I wanted to keep my staff members accountable. I want to keep myself accountable. And I want to catch an issue before it goes into the problem. So I will actually have an example of how to create a scorecard in the ministry in a week posted on the website. So you might want to go back to igoleaders.com and download that. So as I'm wrapping up, um, can you really measure a youth ministry? Are you as a youth leader, or maybe as a small group leader, or you lead some sort of ministry in your church, are you effective? Are you impacting the communities around your church? I hope that this gives you um, some knowledge to maybe start thinking about this and maybe start implementing some of those ideas um, into your youth ministry. Um, and um, last thing that I want to really say and emphasize is that, is that my job is to be here for you. And I know Daniel's job is to be here for you as well. Um, we're here, we would love to hear from you and we would love to hear your questions. I know that I kind of gave you, you know, big overview about how to measure. Measure up is the topic of this webinar. And I kind of give you a few points that kind of touch on this subject just quickly, right? Because it takes a long time. But if you really are serious about not just setting goals and hopefully somehow you're going to achieve them, but really breaking it down, right? And delegating responsibilities and organizing a team around you. And I'm not just talking about now to churches that have maybe 50, 70, or over 100 youth come into your meetings and things like that. I'm speaking to you, maybe you have 10, maybe 15, maybe 20, maybe 30 um, members of you. Start organizing people that are capable around you. Start learning how to see um, talent in people and start delegating. Start small, S start setting very simple goals, you know, Go and visit a conference with your youth. That's a goal. You know, set a goal maybe to go out to three conferences per year. Maybe set a goal to, I don't know, organize small groups if you don't have them in your, in your um, church yet. So start small. I really encourage you to start small. So thank you guys so much for your time. Um, let's take a look if, uh, if there is any questions. 
there's no questions. Everyone is so smart. I love it. So another thing that I want to say to you guys is um, if you didn't sign up for a youth leaders retreat that's going to be next weekend, tomorrow is the deadline to sign up. Um, so don't forget to do that. If you have any questions, please um, email me, alex at igrowleaders.com, um, and I'll be more than glad to help you out um, any, any, any help that I can. So thank you guys so much. Let me see if Daniel, I know he had um, some problems there with, um, with his. With I'm here. back, I'm good. And um, thank you, Brother yeah. Alex, uh, for sharing with us. It was an amazing, good information. And yeah, God bless you all. Good. Thank you guys so much. And the next webinar is going to be March 21st. So that's March 21st, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time and 9 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have a wonderful speaker. We already have wonderful topics um, that we kind of selected for different webinars. So can't wait to see you guys next time. Thank you. God bless you.